This is what your recommended daily salt looks like. Two Big Macs worth. But this is how much salt you might lose after an intense workout. 30 Big Macs worth. Which seems impossible, right? But that's only part of the problem. Because your electrolyte drink probably doesn't replenish what you actually sweat. This bottle has more sugar than a bag of M&Ms and a little salt. But this packet has a lot of salt and zero sugar. And this packet has a lot of stuff including two days worth of B12. But all three of these hydrate you. As far as hydration, think water follows salt. And this confusion matters because hydrating properly doesn't just impact cramping and endurance athletes, it impacts how we function every day. Ironman athlete died during the triathlon in Boulder last month. So I started digging and found a huge body of research tracking thousands of athletes' sweat and fluid depletion. And I also tested my own sweat. And what I found completely changed how I hydrate. Wow. There are a tremendous amount of misconceptions around electrolytes. So here's everything I've learned about electrolytes and hydration. And if you stay till the end, I'll give you your own at-home formula that only requires a few ingredients. And share a little bit of a hot take. This is what 34 grams of sugar looks like in your sports drink. How did we go from basically sugar water to now salt water? Water has largely been associated with hydration for as long as humans have been around. But that changed only relatively recently by what I might call the godfather of modern hydration. The one drink scientifically designed to give your body what it's thirsty for. Gatorade famously started with researchers at the University of Florida studying the football players' excessive sweat loss, which had been recorded up to 18 pounds in a game. Despite drinking water in 1966, at least 17 players were hospitalized for heat exhaustion. The researchers concluded the players' electrolytes were completely out of balance and their blood sugar was low. Their solution was water, sugar, a little salt, and these things called electrolytes. I'll get to those in just a minute. But their solution was a hit. Over the next five years, the coach reported only one hospitalization due to heat exhaustion. This might sound obvious now given our familiarity with sports drinks, but supplementing water was revolutionary and largely challenged our historical understanding of hydration. And for decades, water plus sugar plus some electrolytes was the formula. Even now, Gatorade brings in billions and dominates 63% of all sports drink sales. Okay, now that I understood how hydration moved on from just water, how did we pivot from sugar to salt? It seems like we went from high sugar to high salt for a couple of reasons. Let's get the more obvious one out of the way. Obesity rates more than tripled from 13% in 1980 to 34% in the 2000s. And consumers became aware that sugar was perhaps one of the biggest contributors. Sugar officially became a public health enemy. It's like shards in the body. Many consumers and products responded by slashing sugar wherever possible. Soups, cereals, and sports drinks. Keto, low sugar, less sugar. But I think the sugar craze is only part of the reason. And this gets at the main reason for the salt shift. This is Cynthia Lucero. In 2002, she ran the Boston Marathon, collapsed after finishing, and passed away a few days later. She was 28, healthy, and drank plenty of water. However, the autopsy showed dangerously low blood sodium levels that caused fatal brain swelling from too much water. A condition called hyponatremia. When our sodium blood plasma levels can get too low, in the body during exercise, that's where we start to see performance and even health concerns. More fatal cases from endurance athletes were being reported. A major study of that same Boston Marathon found that 13% of runners developed the condition by the end of the race. These fatalities were tragic, but they also forced us to ask a big, big question. And that is, why are people dying in these races? This question prompted more studies, and it turns out there was a big piece of the puzzle missing. This 2016 study of endurance athletes tracked sodium losses across low, medium, and high intensity activities. Their findings showed losses ranging from 600 milligrams up to 6,000 milligrams of sodium lost per hour. And this 2010 study of football players showed similar ranges of high sodium losses. But on days of exercising four and a half hours, some reported up to a whopping 30,000 milligrams of sodium losses. In other words, some of us were depleting way more salt than we thought. The point I want to make here is the new salt craze is certainly somewhat of a backlash to the anti-sugar craze, but there's also an extensive body of research and fatal case studies to reference that support the need for higher, possibly much higher salt supplementation when exercising. So I would just take a little bit of, of sea salt or, yep. or pink salt. You just gotta get more salt, man. So is this it? Salt is our hydration savior now? Well, then what about all these other things on the label? 
If you're enjoying this video, please consider subscribing. I put out deep dives like this about the outdoors every couple weeks. Let's look at the third product label, vitamin C, B12. But these don't really help you hydrate because they're not electrolytes. Electrolytes are specific minerals that dissolve in your body and can carry an electrical charge. They send crucial signals to parts of your body, your muscles, nerves, even your ability to retain water, all rely on tiny electrical messages. And salt is perhaps the best example of this. When it dissolves, salt breaks into sodium and chloride, and without these signals, your body shuts down. Now, what was interesting to me is finding out there's actually a pretty short list, sort of a VIP of electrolytes that we really need. This meta-analysis looked at over 1,300 athletes' sweat, fluid, and electrolyte losses across multiple sports, including football, soccer, basketball, baseball, and endurance sports. Can you guess which sport sweat the most? Football had the highest fluid rate loss, presumably due to the extra insulating clothing and or larger body mass. <laughs> The study concluded the average athlete lost over one liter per hour of exercise. That's this much sweat. And every one of these liters contains a variety of electrolytes. This is how much the average person sweats out in a liter. You can see 95% of what we lose is really just salt. The electrolyte that matters the most is going to be sodium. When you sweat, it's the number one electrolyte that is lost. And this is where finally some of this hydration confusion started to come together for me. Because we know how much fluid the average person loses and how much their average sweat concentrations are. But I still needed to test my own sweat. And this is perhaps where the bigger realization for me was, and maybe the most important part of the whole hydration discussion. But first, a quick note from me. I'm Chris, the founder of Green Belly. We make 650 calorie ready to eat meals. We have an update to our meals coming out in the spring, which are like a high protein rice krispie treat. It's like a rice krispie treat. It's fantastic. I swear up on all things holy, I'm purchasing this product. If you want to be the first to know about them and get a discount when they launch, you can sign up below. I usually send out one value driven email a month with videos like this and things I'm working on. Don't use all this. <laughs> Link below if interested. Now, in order to test my own sweat loss, I'm going to use a few methods. For fluid loss, I'm going to weigh myself before and after the run. No bathroom breaks, no eating or drinking in between, and no clothes on the weigh-ins. I'm also going to use these sweat trackers from NYX and H-Drop, which track fluid loss and sodium loss. I'm going to run for one hour in 74 degree weather at about a 9 to 10 minute mile pace. Now, I've always thought I'm a pretty heavy sweater, but let's see what the data says. Okay, let's look at fluid loss. The scale showed a loss of four pounds. Nick showed 41 ounces and H-Drop showed 55 ounces. So somewhere around two liters of fluid lost. And for sodium, Nick showed under one gram lost and H-Drop showed over two grams lost. So somewhere between one to two Big Macs worth of salt. Apparently I'm in the top 83% of sweaters with above average sodium concentrations. Now I found these results pretty fascinating because I can see my estimated range of depletion and subsequently I am more informed about what I actually need to replenish. But to me, this data and these studies reveal something much bigger. And that is there are huge variations in our sweat output and concentrations. On the individual level, like you can see here from Nix's data, how different sweat levels are from younger men to older women. But also the studies showed sweat output ranged 10 times as much based on intensity alone. And this, this is what I think the final layer of all of this boils down to. Why there is so much confusion around hydration products and electrolyte supplementation, We've been searching for the universal hydration formula between water and sugar and salt and minerals. But the truth is, hydration is radically personal. We all sweat differently and every activity comes with its own unique conditions. We have to understand our own losses because there is no one size fits all solution. Okay, now what does all this mean for you and me? I like to provide something more actionable than just it depends. So let's work off of what we do know. We do know what electrolytes we deplete, and we have several methods that can help us identify our own losses. So I think there are two real action items here. The first, track your losses. Get an estimate of your fluid and electrolyte losses with a scale and trackers or a facility. And the second is replenish accordingly. 
hydration really is about water plus electrolytes and knowing your sweat rate. So here's what I've been doing for my own replenishment, but you know, full disclaimer, these amounts are purely based off of my losses and these ratios are based on averages. As discussed, these will range, but I will link to this calculator I made if you want to use it as a template below. So for example, if I were to do another hour long run in similar conditions, I'd enter 60 ounces of fluid loss and 2000 milligrams of sodium loss, which assuming the rest of my losses are similar to the averages, this can be fully replenished with just water, salt, coconut water, and a few almonds. That's it. Now, one of my big questions still remaining with all of this is sugar. We need sugar, right? Sugar, do, 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 do. Active lifestyles need carbs for energy, and the data seems to support this. I would say one of the most common mistakes that I see is that they think of taking electrolytes as something that provides them with energy. That's what carbohydrates do for athletes. I'm a big carb lady. I would love to hear what some of the hydration brands have to say about sugar. Like how does low carb, sugar-free, keto fit into an energy demanding endurance activity or lifestyle? I'm not trying to pull a gotcha. I'm genuinely curious what I might be missing here. I think the overall idea of taking a supplemental product with a lot of electrolytes and all of these naturally occurring things is probably here to stay. I think what will change and what will fade is what's in those. One more time. You can see... Am I giving it a pause in between these? <laughs>